hear you. Uh, hello, good day to you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, that's great. Nice to hear you. Perfect. And first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me here. It's it's a pleasure to see you once again. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, Dr. Francesco Ferrari and uh, Professor Martin Leiner are getting younger with reconciliation because they reconcile with, with themselves, first of all. So nice to hear you once, once again. So the thing is, uh, I'm talking about a uh, rather complex um, um, topic. It is religion. And the main, uh, one of the main uh, uh, topics about, uh, about the reconciliation is religion. So I was uh, aimed by Dr. Francesco Ferrari to discover some things about Orthodox religion in Ukraine and what is how it is represented, what conflicts we do here. And I'm doing my best to make uh, some kind of postdoc research as we discussed before. But the thing is, it is that complex um, topic that I could not make any 20 minutes describing this so but i try to do my best and i have presentation with some pictures so i would like to ask you to to take a look at this so the topic is religion certification and the reconciliation process you're using european and post-soviet countries experience so the first slide is some kind of uh let me uh it's uh introduction can you hear the can you see the slides Uh, excuse me? Yeah, all right. So, as you know, that for several centuries, it's about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So, for, for several centu centuries, Ukraine has been fighting for their local Orthodox Church all the time. So, for, from the foundation of um, Orthodox Church in Ukraine, in Kiev and Rus, in 988, he, uh, all the time we, we had uh, a struggle against Russia and Moscow Patriarchate. So almost all of the presidents of Ukraine, for, starting from independency, try to identify their own Ukrainian local church. But with, with the influence of Moscow, you know, it's some kind of uh, nuclear shield to Putin to uh, control, uh, to control uh, church itself. So I will talk about the, uh, the concept of uh, local church in the Ukrainian Orthodox uh, Church. So the, uh, the concept of local church is not identical to the concept of national church. There may be uh, several na national churches in the country, but not every national church is local, but the, um, but the most of the local Orthodox churches, recognized and rec non-recognized, are uh, um, uh, are national and they perform ethno preserving uh, functions. The concept of national church should cover at least five defining per parameters: historical, geographical, ethnocultural, political, and demographic. Thus, the functioning of the national church should be considered as. Uh, in a, uh, they have national church has to stand in a certain his, historical period, period, then in a certain area, then in a, a, through the prism of uh, its assimilation and promotion of ethnoculture, i.e., language, culture, and traditions, and uh, then in terms of the scale of the religion spread among the population of the in the country. If the church ignores national language, culture, and traditions, and is subordinated to a foreign nation, uh, nation and political center, which neglects national interests uh, and even works against national sovereignty, then such church is not national even uh, if a large number of parishioners belong to ruling ethnicity. And then I would like to quote uh, Zbigniew Jerzynski uh, saying that uh, there is some kind of controversial position of Ukraine and Russia, if we are talking about that conflict, regarding the creation of uh, Ukrainian local church, uh, that it is impossible to achieve real state independence if at least 
20% of religious network in the country is controlled from outside. That we can see uh, uh, easily uh, was uh, took took place uh, in Ukraine. So more than three or four hundred years, it is discussable. Uh, Ukrainian church is controlled mainly by Moscow. That that is one of the part of the conflict. So uh, uh, as I told, as I mentioned before, that. Uh, for Russia, control, uh, controlling Ukrainian church is equal to nuclear shield. Uh, that's, these are the components that, that strengthen Russian statehood. Uh, and I would quote uh, the principle of independent state uh, uh, named by the the norm of the, uh, named by the Hilarion the first of Kiev who ruled uh, given church from 1990 to 1088. He was the first metropolitan of Kiev Slavic origin, who was elected uh, that, uh, um, by the Council of Ukrainian Bishops. And later he was, uh, that, his, that choice was approved by, by Patriarch of Constantinople. That, that means that independent state is independent choice. Uh, church, I'm sorry. So uh, we have to be independent from someone. We are always dependent uh, mentally, politically, or economically. So that's uh, our independence, Ukrainian independent church was always controlled by someone. And uh, I would like to show you that um, few, uh, the restoration, uh, the restora always uh, for for decades after uh, patriarchates uh, moved out of destroyed Kiev and Rus to Moscow and they founded Moscow and they founded Moscow Patriarchate, which was uh, unaccepted by, uh, um, by others. And by the way, if you know, there is one interesting fact that uh, uh, Russia, Russian patriarchate committed crime. So they, they captured uh, one of the metropolitan, metropolitans uh, from uh, Istanbul and um, um, let me see, uh, uh, once, uh, I'm sorry, uh, committed crimes. Patriarch Jeremiah II of Constantinople was under arrest in Moscow for six months until he agreed to sign the Thomas on the, for the autocephaly of the, for the Moscow Orthodox Church. So uh, talking about freedom, we have to say some, some things that Ukrainian church, Ukrainian society, Ukrainian mentality was always controlled by Russia, to my opinion as a researcher. And I would switch to Bolsheviks um, regime, which took place from 1970. And uh, that's, uh, they declared one saying that opium for, uh, religion is as opium for the people. And they uh, uh, persecuted the church for many years. And uh, that was the, the part of the complex uh, co uh, conflict. And, uh, as early as January 1918, they declare uh, separation of the church from the state. They separated religion, mind, and uh, beliefs from the state, and it was issued. And all religious organization and their legal rights were declared uh, as uh, the property, uh, the public property. And I would like to show you a few pictures from here. You can see the, the destroying of the churches. Can you see it? Uh, excuse me. I can hear you. And then you can see the second slide. Uh, third slide. We, we don't see, uh, Vladislav, we don't see the pictures. We can I see, see I, maybe you can try to share it. Uh, yeah, once, once more, I, I will, uh, well, I'm sorry, I will try to do once more. Okay, you can you can show it in the end if you want. Just of course, yes. And show in the end what's, whatever you, you want. Um, 
can you see the pictures now? No. I'm sorry. Something is wrong. It's okay. You can you can stop or you can show it in the end. Yeah, so I will I will do it. Is, yes, this is the picture to show our pics pictures in the end. All right. So uh, the um, the acts of controlling the church um, marked the beginning of the mass looting and destruction of temples, repression against the clergy and um, uh, all uh, this led to the uh, total control of the OGPU and KVD and MGB uh, organs that uh, tried to uh, control all of the uh, state of mind. And it, some of the statistics that according to the repressive authorities, uh, two, uh, almost two and a half uh, thousand of clergy were arrested in 1923, uh, 1924, and uh, two, uh, three, uh, ten years later, their number reached to almost 20,000 of clergy that were arrested. And uh, fighters for the purity of ideology may, made no distinctions. All, re all regions suffered uh, from auto Orthodox and Catholics, Lutherans and Protestants, Baptists and Mennonites, followers of Islam and Buddhists. So with the beginning of the collectivization, um, uh, uh, there are few statistic uh, numbers that uh, from half of the million of uh, clergy people were to, from from half of the million till uh, one million of p clergy p uh, clergymen were uh, sent to gulags, uh, destroyed, shot, uh, and 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 the, a lot of this information. The, that way we come to some kind of reconciliation between uh, within ourselves and recon reconciliation uh, with with the government and with the, with the religion so i would name some uh, some points uh, what uh, why is the topic of the perspective of ukrainian orthodoxy in the world's family of churches is so relevant for ukraine and so unacceptable to russia in tradition uh, to the already mentioned uh, expectation of more effective and efficient uh, development of Ukraine orthodoxy. And these are some points. First of all, I would like that the powerful and practically uh, uninvolved factor of mental revival of the Ukrainian nation, its political, economical and social development. Uh, it is a matter of minimizing the ideological and economical influences of Russian Federation uh, in the condition of hybrid war, which currently is taking place not only through television, it is taking place on uh, the western part of Ukraine and Crimea as an exit, uh, as you know. Also, internet, concert activities, financial connections, but also through the so-called church channels, like church media, sermons, uh, children and youth education, summer schools, and, uh, and others. Second point is that the fa factor of uh, counteracting to, to, to total Russification of Ukrainians and deposing the Russian mentality on them. And this is not a secret uh, that one of the tasks of Moscow Patriarchate in Ukraine is, uh, even in Tsarist uh, and Soviet times, was a Russification of the local population and anti-Ukrainian propaganda for uh, which in Tsarist times every, uh, even the salary was officially paid extra. And unfortunately, unfortunately this tradition uh, was uh, in Soviet times and is still alive, not only in Eastern U uh, regions of Ukraine. Uh, next point is uh, that a quick and effective step towards the return of Ukraine to Ukraine, uh, Ukraine to Ukraine, is to minimal, uh, minimize the uh, influence uh, in the country. Uh, of the ideological surrogate of Soviet men. Maybe you've heard about this. Sovietsky Chelovek, uh, that is uh, one of the most uh, 
Советский and Russian world, русский мир, you've heard about this, that uh, they have to influence. And uh, this is some kind of uh, copy from, uh, from Petro Mahila saying a quote that uh, uh, you have to uh, reconcile Russia with Russia, meaning you have to reconcile, he was a Ukrainian uh, actor of even politics and religion, that you have to reconcile Ukrainians with the Ukrainians. Uh, but it is not uh, long, it is no longer a question of reconciling Ukrainians and Greek Catholics or, or other players. Uh, it is uh, inter-Orthodox reconciliation and inter-national uh, uh, dialogue. The next point I would like to say is that uh, it is a stimulus to the practical implementation of the requirements uh, uh, of social doctrines. And uh, we would like to increase the level of patriotism uh, between believers and in the country as a whole. So uh, reconciling within the church is meaning, means reconciling uh, within the country and starting inter and outer uh, national dialogue. And yeah, the last point is that, but not last, but not least, is uh, a factor that of the formation of own church, uh, church uh, production infrastructure. If church, uh, national church works for, uh, for itself, uh, it, it can strengthen a national economy rather than economy of the uh, neighborhood countries. So the dialogue just started. We've got uh, Thomas from 1918, and we are now the part of the dialogue. Uh, we are now the, uh, the part of the uh, Christian and national society, Orthodox as well. And uh, by the way, the European Union supports uh, strongly Ukrainian inter and outer dialogue and we are moving towards. By the way, in 1919, there was a huge grant that uh, made, uh, not made, uh, tried to make, to, to, uh, to make both sides, even Catholics and Orthodox um, parts to sit at the round table and to talk about reunification about, uh, with, with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and uh, Greek Catholic Church, which are supported and controlled by different sides. I am talking about the Istanbul, i.e. Um, Constantinople and Vatican. These are two sides that uh, I will show you in slides. And uh, if uh, I, I will try to... Uh, uh, can you see the pictures or no? I don't know what's happening. Uh, let me... I'm trying to do my best. Uh, let me try this. Uh, uh, if there are some questions, I will try to manage my computer. And uh, I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, see you in European Union. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are now in the European Union here. No, I'm, I'm, to I'm talking not about only European Union. I mean, I mean the European Union traditions, because if we, as soon as we get out of uh, Moscow influence, we're more moving towards European traditions, democratizations, uh, dialogue, reconciliation, which was forbidden for more than 300 years. And now it just started. So I, I thank you. I, I think also in Russia there is a European tradition and Ukraine is also European countries. So we are in Europe as well. <laughs> the Europe is very different. <laughs> I'm just recognized part of Israel as Europe, but <laughs> it's under discussion. Not yeah, it's, everything is discussable, yes, of course. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was very, uh, just from the, from the, um, uh, very interesting about the church and about the history of Ukrainian church and the struggle.
if uh, someone yes now we see your picture because you closed oh, yeah, yeah. yeah um, i'm deeply sorry for this so you can see the, okay. the first picture uh, it is uh, uh, this is how a bolsheviks regime uh, tried to destroy national churches and they, this is uh, you know the church of uh, the priests in moscow this how it started uh, secondly is uh, representing how they struggled against religion uh, third is you can see that they're blow, blowing it and, and this is the court for the metropolite we started uh, with the Bolsheviks regime and you can see the faces of the people who are against the religion and all that and uh, for, uh, in 19 uh, 19 a lot, uh, almost 500 of uh, clergymen were shot just for for their um, belief and you, in the next picture you can see the looting uh, the uh, looting the church uh, nothing saint and then it, it it's uh, changed to the, the the shoot of the inside the temple uh, uh, it found a place uh, in some uh, arts uh, you can see here the also the, the Bolsheviks uh, local uh, courts and you can you can imagine the result how, how it affected on the uh, the person uh, it found uh, some ideas uh, this um, found some ideas in uh, arts and icony uh, drawings to the left and uh, for me it's to the left and then uh, drawings to the right uh, and then it uh, changed to propaganda, which uh, took place from big repressions uh, in uh, late 30s. Um, you can see to the left uh, that uh, a young uh, girl is going to school, but uh, uh, her granny is taking her to, to the church. And uh, to the right, you can see that uh, it is, uh, church is uh, a prison for the heart and the mind. Uh, next slide is um, uh, to the left. You can see that uh, your uh, block, your mind is blocked with the Bible, and your thoughts are blocked with the Bible. And to the right, you can see the picture. The church is making money like the water pump. Uh, uh, and as I told you that all of the clergymen, all of the religions suffered, uh, the, the picture to the left that uh, someone is controlling the, to the left, the Orthodox religion, uh, Mennonite, uh, uh, Islamic religion and Rabin, Rebbe, uh, are controlled by someone. And then it changed for the uh, course, uh, space era. And there is a saying of Gagarin uh, that I've been at the space and I've seen not, no God there. To the right, you can see the picture that perfectly describes uh, this saying that uh, the spaceman is floating and saying that there is no God. And then it changed uh, to uh, uh, historic, uh, historically changed to um, priests who are uh, making uh, arms saints to kill people and you can see the the rockets here that uh, are blessed with the holy water and the clergymen um, that are killing people i'm talking about now uh, uh, about russian uh, part of uh, our russian patriarchate of uh, russian moscow patriarchate and you can see the nuclear uh, rockets uh, at the bottom which is also so so-called saint, and this is awful. Uh, next one, it affected Ukraine. You can see a priest standing in the middle uh, with uh, so-called the uh, Dublix, um, Donetsk Public Re Republic um, fighters uh, with with bazooka at the back, and uh, this how uh, Mo Moscow supports uh, Orthodox religion in Ukraine. Uh, next slide, so you can see the soldier, uh, soldier going to to, um, uh, to war in Syria. He is kissing the cross, and the uh, priest is uh, blessing him with this. And um, next slide, you can see a priest who are shooting with the with the firearms. And uh, if it's okay, if, if, if it is a reconciliation for for Russia, and can we reconcile between Russia and Ukraine? 
Next slide is what I talked about, uh, that uh, our main priest Epiphany is talking to Svetoslav, their representative of uh, one and the second part, uh, Constantinople Patriarchate, and the second is uh, Greek Catholic Patriarchate, who is uh, uh, guided by uh, Vatican. They are talking now, so that's why uh, Ukrainian reconciliation between and moving towards European Union started. And I would like to uh, describe this with one picture uh, that took place in, uh, in Western U um, regions in, uh, of Ukraine. It is Lutsk. Their uh, uh, Ukrainian priests are uh, blessing uh, Ukrainian flag with, with European symbolic uh, around, uh, surrounding Ukrainian uh, uh, Ukrainian symbol, and I would like to finish my uh, dog presentation, picture presentation with with this uh, picture uh, that uh, seems like some kind of insane to you, but this is how we move towards European uh, traditions, and um, uh, we are more close to uh, as mentally we're more close to that uh, flag inside uh, of the picture. Thank you very much. Any questions and comments? I, I, I've got a question. Please. Um, thank you very much for the for the presentation. I have uh, I have a comment and, and a question. So um, uh, my general impression of 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 the presentation is that uh, it's it's good analysis of of the conflict of religious dimensions, but it might have um, some challenges for reconciliation. And it's, it's not the problem of this specific um, topic, religion, but it's generally the, the problem of Ukrainians and Ukrainian researchers trying to, to do research on the conflict and simultaneously being the part of the conflict. We cannot deny, uh, well, I, I assume you are Ukrainian, but, um, correct me if, if you're not. Um, talking about myself, uh, I, uh, I have this tremendous problem as a researcher, uh, positioning myself in, in the conflict um, resolution and reconciliation research and, and trying to be objective or neutral. The, the biggest challenge is how we avoid ideological uh, paradigms and how, how do we uh, reconcile uh, the security issues, the, the aspects of actual hybrid war that Russia is conducting in Ukraine from the one hand, and the aspects of reconciliation and true peace building, recognition, trust building and relationship building from the other hand. And what I heard in this presentation, it was a rather mix of different things. And I heard, for example, suggestion to increase level of patriotism within uh, parishes. Uh, I tell you the experience of of dialogue and, and, and peace builders uh, on uh, on increasing levels of patriotism. Back in 2014, uh, there were quite a few Ukrainian NGOs who got grants from, from international donors for peace building. And uh, the idea of peace building was taking Ukrainian flags and Vishivankas to schools uh, to Donbass, to controlled part and uh, uh, promote uh, Ukrainian language, uh, Ukrainian culture, and so on. But when it comes to patriotism, uh, the experience were negative. When you promote patriotism in, in, in a real exclusive way, it kills 
recognition, it kills trust building, and it increases polarization. So, so basically, this dilemma um, of certain uh, need for security issues and, and for acknowledgement of Russian aggression in Ukraine from one hand, and uh, the need of true reconciliation even within Ukrainian society. How do you think this dilemma um, can be approached in, uh, in the studies of religion uh, aspect of the conflict? Thank you very much for your question. Um, rather complex, but uh, I will try to answer because how can it be uh, not controlled? How can it be guided by religion? I think that it, it is the question of uh, not, a, uh, not one decade, because uh, the conflict is rather young, rather old, but it is, it is six years old. For, for the conflict, I mean the hybrid war, the conflict between religion and the, the, between the controlling the patriarchate is uh, taking place for more than 300 years. Well, I, I will say it, 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 it takes uh, like 700 years or more. It takes place. So, how can it be uh, guided by religion? If I if I've got you right, uh, the thing is, I think um, uh, they have to um, rise uh, Ukrainian society, and it will take more than twenty five years. So, reconciliation process will take uh, uh, not uh, will will take place not not for even ten years, uh, in my opinion. Religion is. The, the, the guide that will uh, try to aim some, uh, some minds to reconcile between, within uh, themselves and then to, to make some effect for others. If we are talking about patriotism that you mentioned in 2014, I have, we have some example in Ukraine. I'm living in Kiev, you mentioned it right. Uh, and uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have uh, some kind of a program guided by Kiev uh, governments that uh, every scholar have to sing na national anthem before the uh, classes. I'm not sure it is right. It will uh, it will uh, make some pupil and their parents uh, to to change the school into some private schools because making someone to uh, to be a patriot is uh, is always taking uh, the opposite effect. So, uh, uh, how do we uh, ca can reconcile with with the church? Ch church can just lead us, just show us the path, and to start the dialogue between even Russian part and Ukrainian part um, uh, uh, of th thinkers. Thank you. Well, if, if I can suggest, then uh, I had a colleague of mine, she defended the first PhD in Ukraine on the conflict in sociology on, on the religious aspects of the conflict. And, uh, and there was another interesting study uh, of my colleagues from US Institute of Peace and ETH Zurich on religious aspects of conflict. If you're interested, I can share this with you. That would be great. It would be great. Uh, and I would be grateful. Thank you very much. Because it, it, it is, uh, it, uh, the, the presentation is rather fragile because it goes out of the postdoc research. So that's why uh, there is a huge amount of information. And if you are interested, I would like, I would, I would be happy to share it with you. Thank you very much.